the future, but uh, I was born in Glasgow. Can the Fed cut? It uh, doesn't have enough cover to cut. Even if it does cut, can it cut enough? And they're sitting there with enormous, uh, uh, unmarked uh, losses on those, those bond portfolios. Everyone is praying that interest rates come down. So what happens if they, they actually have to start marking, uh, marking those losses? The issue of A, when's the Fed gonna cut interest rates? And how far are the interest rates gonna go? Um, and another pointer is the mean, there's no information around the mean. The mean is the present, the mean is the now, the, the mean is the immediacy of what just came before. And what's just come before is, you know, epic bull market and everything, everything going up. Uh, very little pullbacks in, in stocks. I know we've just had something a little bit more uh, meaningful in NASDAQ, however, uh, still pretty small beer. Um, big issue is the Fed interest rates. Um, they want to cut. We just had US GDP. Um, I keep saying to you the fiscal spending is powering the economy um, and it ain't going to change under the auspices of, of tight monetary policy. It's baked into kind of late 26. Um, can the Fed cut? Uh, does it have enough cover to cut? Even if it does cut, can it cut enough to take away this enormous carry, which is sucking in money from the rest of the world? Um, I haven't seen the future. Sometimes I get little kind of visitations, um, but that is the principle uh, risk factor. Cameron, what is Cameron doing over there? So the information is found in the tails. Where are the tails? The tails of wool. Um, so the, the things that I find interesting um, is a trade that I had from 10, 12 years ago. It was a trade uh, speculating on um, a generational slowdown or a break in the Chinese economic model. And I was buying uh, credit default swaps, CDSs, on industrial, uh, operationally leveraged and financially leveraged businesses operating out of Japan. Um, and the one that's more clear in my mind is the steel companies in Japan. Steel is a high fixed cost business. You got it. Uh, heat those blast furnaces all the damn time and that costs money then you get elevated energy costs and there was a time when Japan just had superior steel um, and it was very much dominated like the high-end maybe let's see say the LNG shipping market like building those ships um, but China kept pouring money in and China now has capacity to do like 1.1 billion tons of metric tons of steel production a year. Um, it kind of was consuming that as of like three, four years ago uh, with the rampant housing market, but that's gone, that's gone. I think production now is maybe 900 um, or demand is 900. So there's a surplus, let me tell you, a funny story is not really a funny story, but uh, the, the, the basis of my trade was that a severe curtailment in domestic demand in China would see that immense and expensive um, steel production. It would see it, it would see Chinese producers try and seek uh, overseas markets. And so they'd come up directly against the Chinese and the Koreans. And so I had to see the CDS protection on those stocks because um, a dent in their demand, given their profit models, would be felt would, would ravage their profits uh, and then with their finances very very shaky very very leveraged lots of debt and um, potentially could go bankrupt and the remarkable thing is today you can they still trade at the prices that they were being offered at 12 years ago you get a max payout of a million dollars and you'll never get a million dollars because there's always going to be a recovery in a bankruptcy but mm, recovery might be um, 10, 15, 20 cents on the dollar. So it might be like an $800,000 payout in the event of a bond default. And it costs you $5,000 to put that trade on. I mean, that's the kind of trade I would have on um, today um, in markets just as protection. And the funny story or, or observation is I'm from the future, but uh, I was born in Glasgow. And there are two 
the soccer teams, football teams to you know to the Brits and uh, Celtic and Rangers. And Rangers over the summer uh, decided to revamp and expand the capacity of their football stadium. Uh, and there is woe, woe for their fans because as the approaching season is due to commence, the steel has been delayed and Rangers, the football club, are having to play at the National Stadium, much gnashing of teeth. Um, however, guess where the steel's coming from? You guessed it, it's coming from China. So actually, those Japanese CDS prices are still trading at $5,000 with a max payout of $800,000 to $1 million. Uh, and they are exporting steel to Scotland. Interesting, that's convexity. Convexity um, um, or information is also in the tails. Everything needs lower interest rates. In authority, kind of is hoping for a recession to bring uh, front rates down and, and of course to bring the whole curve of bond yields down. Why? Because, let me tell you another funny story, but what, two years ago, less than, uh, Silicon Valley Bank went bankrupt. A bank in America went bankrupt, went bankrupt, went kaput from owning US Treasury bonds. I mean, life is, I'm in the desert, I'm talking to mountains, the sun is setting, but life is constructed to amplify the absurd. You have huge banks like Bank of America. Banks own government bonds. They own lots of government bonds. Not just banks, but huge savings institutions across the world. And they're sitting there with enormous, uh, uh, unmarked uh, losses on those, those bond portfolios. Everyone is praying that interest rates come down. So again, we have to live in a world where you say, what if that doesn't happen? That's where the information resides. Information resides in the curiosity to ask difficult questions. Um, but I'm not here as a prophet. I'm not here uh, to offer prophecies. I'm just here to say the information is not at the center. The information is not presently in the, the, the lustre for uh, NVIDIA and all things AI. Uh, the information is not in a, in a sharp pullback in technology stocks uh, or in the, the dollar yen. Um, the information resides in the damage that's lurking in unmarked um, investment portfolios and what happens if they, they actually have to start marking, um, marking those losses. So, I think I'm going to get in the hot. Peace and love to you all from the Answer Capitalist. It is last night in the desert in Joshua Tree. But, Hold on, people, because after Joshua Tree, I'm going to the, is it the Gobi Desert? But I'm going to another desert. I'm going to Mongolia. Uh, the world tour continues, just rolls into another continent. See you there. It's the asset capitalist again. I'm talking about China. I'm always talking about China. This time, I'm in Hollywood. I'm at my favorite hotel. I've, I've scrubbed up. I'm wearing a top. I'm by the pool. Anyway, China, economic warfare. Not me that's saying it, um, Evans Ambrose Pritchard, there's a name, writes for the Telegraph, newspaper for kind of old British people. I don't read it, obviously. But Stu, Arsenal fan, Twitter, thank you very much. Reporting on the, the third plan, what was the name of the damn article? Let me just check. Um, oh, cancel that. No, no. Uh, yeah, China's third plan um, is almost a declaration of economic warfare. You bet it is, because the plenum thing is every five years, state command, economy, lots of grey, dull guys in suits, all bowing and, and making catastrophically bad decisions. Um, yeah, March 2009, British Prime Minister brought everyone together in the G20. We were looking at the apocalypse as all the global banks went bankrupt and China went, hey, I, I'm your friend and we're going to do this fiscal dump. We're going to be this bridge that crosses the chasm, the catastrophe of the great financial crisis. Today, two things. China's way, way, way larger, right? Um, its trade surplus on manufacturers is over one, I think 1.3% of global GDP. That's at a level where um, other nations say, get out of here, stop, stop stealing our jobs, stop stealing our technology. So manifestations, Trump, Trump everywhere, uh, but it's not just Trump, Europe. Um, taxes on tradable goods. Taxes just make you poor, poorer, 
right? You want to do something about it, tax or close the financial account, you know? Um, they don't propose it because they're all puppets and the masters are Wall Street money guys and the Chinese Communist Party and its machinations to control. It's meant to be a market price, an exchange rate. It's meant to be a market price. It's not meant to be controlled. Um, it's a great volatility. Uh, advantage because they're messing with markets and eventually might take a long time, but they blow up. Uh, what? How could it blow up? Well, Japan, anyone? The 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 JPY has devalued about thirty five percent. Taiwan in 1997, 1998 didn't have any issues, but when all of its competing mercantiles when they devalued, Taiwan's like, we're in for that as well. So that's an issue. Other issue for China is. Liquidity trap. Banks are busted in a really, really bad way. Yeah, I mean, why? They're all trading. At a, why do I know that? They're all trading at a massive discount to NEV. Um, value trap, people. Value trap. Anyway, read the article. I've attached um, the the link to it. Let me know what you think. But um, the trade surplus in manufacturing is too big for China to rescue its own cause. And any rescue is is a rescue at the margin. It's a um, it's a benefit to China, and it's a very much a disadvantage to you and I. Let's vote for politicians that have the clarity and they're not taking the teat of the finance people who just want asset bubbles everywhere. I'm going to stop because I've got to go and take a cocktail, maybe some tequila. Anyway, let me know your thoughts.